1800 hours Pakistan standard time assalamu alaikum this is radio pakistan the news read by daman zaman the headlines the president says the multinational maritime exercise aman 2021 of the pakistan navy will pave the way to make region more peaceful and secure with combined efforts by all the stakeholders. The Prime Minister and the Governor sent in a meeting in Islamabad today to discuss matters pertaining to the Senate elections. The Foreign Minister has said there are vast opportunities of economic cooperation between Pakistan and Egypt. In the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, a complete strike will be observed tomorrow in connection with the visit of a selected European parliamentary group to the held territory. At the United Nations, Pakistan says it takes pride in its contributions of 200,000 peacekeepers in 46 United Nations missions. In Myanmar, the military janata Rather, the military junta has guaranteed that it will hold elections and hand over power to the elected people. And now the news in detail. The President, Dr. Arif Alvi, says the Pakistan Navy Multinational Maritime Exercise Aman 2021 will pave the way to make the region more peaceful and secure with combined efforts by all the stakeholders. Addressing the concluding ceremony of the exercise in Karachi today, he congratulated the Pakistan Navy for successfully hosting the Aman 21 and reaffirming Pakistan's resolve for promoting peace and security in the region. The President thanked the participating regional and extra-regional navies for displaying their commitment to collaborative maritime security despite COVID-19 pandemic. Dr. Arif Alvi also observed various operational maneuvers and drills during the International Fleet Review. The Fleet Review also featured an impressive fly pass by the Pakistan Navy, Pakistan Air Force and the participating foreign aircraft followed by man and cheer ship by participating ships. Speaking on the occasion, the Naval Chief Admiral Mohammad Amjad Khan Niazi said the Pakistan Navy will continue to play active role in enhancing regional maritime security individually and in collaboration with partner navies. The Governor Sin Imran Ismail called on Prime Minister Imran Khan in Islamabad today and discussed matters pertaining to the Senate elections. The Pakistan Tariq and Saf leader Saifullah Niazi was also present on the occasion. The advisor on commerce, Abdul Razak Daud, also separately called on the Prime Minister and briefed him about his visit to Uzbekistan and promotion of trade between the two countries. The Foreign Minister, Shami Qureshi, says there are vast opportunities of economic cooperation between Pakistan and Egypt. He expressed these views in a video message before his departure for Egypt on a two-day visit on the invitation of his Egyptian counterpart. The foreign minister said he will hold talks with his Egyptian counterpart, Sami Hassan Shukri, on the entire spectrum of bilateral relations. He said Egypt is an important country of the Muslim Ummah and the gateway to Africa. He said promoting trade relations with Africa is a priority of the incumbent government. The foreign minister said during his stay in Egypt, he also intends to visit Jamia al-Azhar, and our desire is to take advantage from their experiences in the field of education. Shami Mudkureshi said he will meet the business community in Egypt. He will also meet the members of the Pakistani community and will talk to the local and international media representatives in Cairo. The Interior Minister Sheikh Rashid Ahmed says the network of Nadra officers will be expanded at the Tasil headquarters level all across the country. Addressing a news conference in Islamabad today, he said Nadra will issue 100,000 identity cards per day. The Interior Minister said the fee of passports for 10 years has also been reduced. He asked the people to apply for 10 years passport in order to reduce the burden on passport officers. Sheikh Rashid Ahmed said said the passport of former Prime Minister Muhammad Nawaz Sharif is expiring tonight. He said the names of both Muhammad Nawaz Sharif and Maryam Nawaz have been 
on the exit control list since August 2018 and they cannot be issued passports. The Indian minister said Nawaz Sharif is not being stopped from coming back to Pakistan. He said if Nawaz Sharif desires so, he will be issued emergency travel documents. The Minister for Science and Technology, Chaudhry Fawad Hussain, has termed the allegations of the Indian leadership and the media accusing him of running an international disinformation campaign against their country as absurd. In a tweet, he said in the presence of the leadership like Narendra Modi, no one needs to plan anything against India as Modi himself is enough to destroy his country. This is Radio Pakistan. In the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, a complete strike will be observed tomorrow in connection with the visit of a selected European parliamentary group to the held territory. The visit has been arranged by the Indian authorities. The call for the strike has been given by the All Parties Huryat Conference and supported by all pro-freedom leaders and organizations to draw the attention of the international community to the urgency for resolution of the Kashmir dispute as per the Kashmiri's aspirations. Huryat leaders and organizations including Professor Abdul Ghani Bach, Shabir Ahmadar, Muhammad Yusuf Nakash, Zumruda Habib, Jammu and Kashmir Democratic Freedom Party and Jammu and Kashmir Liberation Front in their separate statements said the European Union parliamentarians arranged visit as a ploy to hoodwink the international community. They pointed out that the paid visit is a disgrace to the world because those who call themselves true Democrats are making entertainment trips to the imprisoned paradise on earth. Meanwhile, posters with slogans like Wake Up, Wake Up, United Nations, European Union, Wake Up have appeared in Sirinagar, Pulwama, Baramula and other areas to record Kashmiri's protests against the visit of the European group. Posters displayed by Varasine Shohada, Jammu and Kashmir and Youth of Kashmir were also inscribed with slogans like We Want Freedom and Kashmir Seeks World Attention. At the United Nations, Pakistan has expressed the confidence that the world body will ensure vaccination of all peacekeepers against COVID-19 quickly and equitably. Addressing the plenary meeting of Special Committee on Peacekeeping Operations, Pakistan's permanent representative to the United Nations, Munir Akram, said all our peacekeepers are essential workers. He commended the United Nations for maintaining the continuity of peacekeeping and preserving the safety of peacekeepers during the COVID-19 crisis. Munir Akram said the United Nations peacekeeping is a success story and Pakistan takes pride in its contribution of 200,000 peacekeepers in 46 United Nations missions. He said the UN peacekeepers should be equipped with the best available capabilities, including rapid reaction units, aviation intelligence, hospitals, unarmed vehicles and satellite communications to ensure the safety and security rather unmanned vehicles prominent international daily the new york times has criticized the indian government's continuous crackdown on freedom of speech and dissent in an article the paper refers to international reports that any freedom of speech in india has declined for a third consecutive year the paper also criticized the arrest of young activist disha ravi for dis- dis- distributing a toolkit to garner support for farmers protesting against the new farm laws it writes that modi led bjp government has resorted to blocking internet and stifling fundamental freedoms in response to its contentious policies against muslims and actions in the illegally occupied jammu and kashmir in Myanmar, the military junta has guaranteed that it would hold elections and hand over power to the elected people. The spokesman for the ruling council, Brigadier General Zhu Min Tun, told a news conference that the military would not hold power for long. He also said Myanmar's foreign policy would not change. It will remain open for business and deals would be upheld. And finally, the weather. 
Cold and dry weather is expected in most parts of the country during the next 12 hours. Fog is likely to prevail over the plain areas of Punjab during evening and night hours. And that is the end of this news bulletin. For more news and analyses, log on to our website radio.gov.pk and you can also watch the live video streaming of our bulletins on the link facebook.com forward slash radio Pakistan news.